Hello, welcome to Electronics Education. I'm Vincent Chan. In the previous lecture, we have learned about the small signal model, which is the first order model of the MOSFET. In this lecture, I'm going to take you from the first order to the second order, where more physical, physical effect will be considered. MOSFET small signal model part two. Output resistance and the body transconductance. So first, second order effect should be considered is the one that you are supposed to know is called channel length modulation. So when the device in the saturation mode, if we increase the VDS, then the effective channel length will be shortened and then causing the ID going up goes up. So this is the channel length modulation. So the, then the consequences you see in the current voltage characteristic when the device in the saturation is this, the curve is going to go up. When VDS increased, ID will keep ramping up. Channel length modulation describing, formulated by this equation. So ID is not only controlled by VGS, but also controlled by VDS. This is the large signal relationship. Large signal VDS goes up, but how quickly the ID will goes up will be quantized, will be described. The level of channel length modulation will be described by the lambda called channel length modulation parameter. So the one on the top is the largest signal. The one on your right now is the small signal, it's the AC. So in the AC, we know the relationship under the small signal should become the linear. And the first item is the one you learn from the previous lecture. It's the transconductance, GMVGS. So, because the ID now will be controlled, will be affected by two variables in the large signal. So, in the same way, for the AC, for the AC, we'll create the second variation, the second contribution, which is from the VDS. Okay? So, again, maybe you can just, I encourage you to. You can just maybe close your eyes and picture and think about this. So ID is the major variable we are concerning about, right? The AC upper current. So AC upper current is now affected, controlled by two things. The first one is the input voltage called VGS. The second one is the output voltage. If we define the transistor in the common source configuration. VGS is the input voltage, and VDS is the output voltage. So now the ID has the two bars. The one is the primary bus, primary bus from the first order effect, transconductance. But the second bus, the, 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 the source of the second variation created by the upper voltage. So the first boss is the transfer, because the output versus the input is the transconductance. But the second dairy boss is the output current output versus output voltage. So it's the local. Okay, it's the local. It's the local boss. So local output voltage affect local output current. So it's the output resistance. It's the output resistance. All right? So high prepare model is the one that we learned from the past, from the previous lecture. So now first order, this is the first order. When the ideal case, ideal ca case happen. And second order means beyond ideal ca case, more second order effect should be considered. So first order model on the top tells us ID equals GMVGS, and then Actually, in reality, in the practical case, it's not. 
is not the case. Should we consider a second source of variation coming from the output voltage? So that factor defines us the output resistance. So on the right, on your right, then you see the mass second order model. So this is the current e equals current plus current, right? Current, look at this equation. Plus e equals current plus current means what? Node. Kickoff current law. Kickoff current law. So you need a node. We need a node. Okay, let me take out my video. So see the ID. Now pay attention to the node. The one, the node on the top of RO tells us the first current, uh, G and VGS, the second current based on Ohm's law. VDS over RO equals the second current. So this is the second order model. That resistance is called output resistance. So when the RO becomes the infinite, then you go back to the ideal one, right? If we open circuit, the upper resistance, you go back to the first order model. Again, the green highlight is the, the small signal equation. The one on the top, now is the large signal. So in the next one, in moving forward, I'm going to derive, we are going to de derive the formulation for the output resistance. So the similar concept as the transconductance. R can be simply defined and found out by the derivative. So partial ID, partial VDS, when VGS is kept constant, okay? We want to solely, we don't want to confuse the messed up. So v, this is the concept from calculus. When you take the partial derivative for the second variable, the first variable has to be shut up, okay? Has to be remains as constant. Has to be remains as the constant. So pay attention to the dimension. Partial ID, partial V, what? DS should be inverse. Because it's not output conductance. Now it's the, we try to find out the output resistance. The variation of the ID solely coming from the variation of the VDS. That's the concept. Then for the math part, it's easy, right? So here's the outcome. Very easy. So one, when you take the derivative, it becomes zero. So contribution only coming from the second term, which is this. And then you can, we can neglect the second term for the DC current. Then the final outcome becomes very simple relationship. So it's this, early voltage divide, divided by DC bias curve. Of course, you can replace VA with one over lambda, lambda, which is the channel length modulation parameter, right? So two formulation, this is the first one, this is the second one. So first part is done. So there are two things we want to cover, should be covered in this lecture. The first one related to channel length modulation, but the second one related to the body effect. So what is the body effect? Do you, do you still remember? What is body effect? It's the one of the most important parameter, threshold voltage, is it affected by the voltage at the back, the voltage at the body. It's called when VSB goes up, VT goes up. VT is controlled by the source to body reverse bias voltage. It's called body effect. Why? Why? Why cause body effect? This is something that you can go back to review if you forget. I know a lot of students will forget this because I use the physical illustration to explain 
why VSP increase, and then what happened to the dep depression layer, and, uh, and what happened to the effective channel depth to explain how VT is, uh, is affected by the body voltage. Okay, so now I want you to, I just want to illustrate a little bit more. What is the transconductance? What is the transconductance? The transconductance is the ID is controlled by what? Affected by the VGS, right? So think about this. If you modulate, if you tune, if you vibrate, modulate the AC voltage on the top, then the channel current will be strong, weak, strong, weak. And then this kind of ability, this type of ability is called transconductance. So how strong the AC's current variation is affected by the changing of the AC input voltage, gate voltage. This kind of is, is, is called the transconductance from who? From the one, your front door. The front door. So for the MOSFET, there are actually two doors. You have front door on the top, you have back door at the bottom. So you have the two gate. So front gate capability is called transconductance. And tell that tells us this. And also local will also affect, right? When VDS change, then the field along the channel will strong, weak, strong, weak. So ID will also go up, down, up, down like this. Output resistance. And there are third one coming from the back door. So think about this. When back door, if the back gate voltage modulator changing, then what happened? The threshold voltage will change, right? Threshold voltage will change. And threshold voltage will affect the current, of course. If VT goes up, ID goes down. If VT goes down, ID goes up. Have you ever heard that half K VGS minus VT square? So when VD goes, is changing, then the ID will change. And they change of the ID coming from the back door. So it's also another transconductance. The meaning is the same. It's similar, not, not exactly the same, but ability is different. Which one is supposed to be stronger? The one on the top, the front gate transconductance should be stronger, right? Otherwise, when you, when you get the, the MOSFET issue flipped, use the, take the back gate as the front gate, right? It's not going to happen. I'm just kidding. But you get the point. The point is this kind of also a conductance, but coming from the body. The back gate is the back gate transconductance. Simply we call it body transconductance. So it's simply why I explain so much, just to help you accept GM from gate GM VGS. You just change G to B. So just changing the G, G to B. So GM B VBS. That's it. Got it? So now, here comes the derivation for the body transconductance. No, let's follow the slide. A small signal model comes first. This is easy. One, two, three, right? Right? Very clear. Note the equation, the three, three, one. The first one, the orange, 
first order. Second third is from the second order. The one in the middle, the second term, represent the channel length modulation describing by the output resistance. And the third one is represent the body effect. And there's a parameter associated with this called body transconductance. Now, this is the time we're supposed to derive the body transconductance, similar to the, trans the, the output resistance. When you try to take the contribution, the variation, only from the body, then the first two guys has to keep their mouth shut. The VGS and the VDS should be kept constant. CNST means constant. Okay? So now the partial ID partial VBS. Okay? So from G to B. If partial ID to partial VGS, then that's the front gate transconductance. Now it's the partial ID partial V. BS, chain rule. So use the VT as the bridge, chain rule in, we learn from the calculus. Then the first derivative is easy. It's the negative transconductance, right? And then the second derivative, we simply, the first one is easy, okay? I suppose you learned the calculus already, okay? This shouldn't trouble you. But the second one, let's pay attention to the second one. For the second highlight, the second one, now I, I put a negative sign. Now it's partial VSB, okay? VBS equals negative, and two negativity got canceled out. And then you will see this. Because the first term, it's actually, this, this highlight is actually the transconductance, okay? So every detail is very clear, every step, very clear. And then what about the second derivative? This derivative is actually can be found out by the formulation we learn from body effect. Vt0, body effect coefficient gamma, and the Fermi potential, phi, F. So you can, based on this definition, and define a new variable which symbolizes the degree of body effect in the AC realm. It's called chi. Okay? So partial VT, partial VSB. You can find out how to... the, the chi's formulation, which is proportional to the largest signal parameter called gamma body effect coefficient. So usually the chi's value, you can just take a note, is somewhere around 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So if the front gate's transconductance is 10, the back door's ability could be 1 or 2. Assuming chi equals 0 0.1 and then the body transconductance is going is to be 1. Okay? Here's the takeaway. Remember this model. Very important. Very important. So here's the takeaway. Remember this model. Transconductance, upper resistance, picture this in your mind. Body transconductance. Can you do that? I think you can. And then formulation, early voltage divided by the bias current, and body transconductance equals the front gate, the strong one, times a factor, reflecting the degree of the body effect, and which typical value is somewhere around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. This is the end of the lecture. Thanks for watching.